Hi everyone, welcome to the BOI webinar on the manufacturing sector. We are indeed happy to see that so many of you have joined us today, which is very encouraging to see the interest expressed by participants who have joined us from various time zones in the world to find out the incentives and the facilities BOI provides to this sector. Today I am joined by my executive team who is with me and will be with us throughout the presentation to answer any questions you may have towards the end of the session. I also encourage you to use the chat box to come up with any questions or clarifications that you may require to find out which we will address at the close of the presentation. With that, let us look at the presentation itself. Let us look at the investment opportunities and to start, I will give you a brief overview of what we will be looking at today in terms of the investment climate, the incentives that are offered, the talent pool that is available to investors when they come to Sri Lanka, the market access in terms of the free trade agreements that we have entered into with other countries, the quality of life and location advantages a company would enjoy by positioning itself and its production lines in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka offers a very conducive investment policy where 100 percent foreign ownership is permitted and 100 percent repatriation of profits is readily available for investors. What is very key is that foreign investments are guaranteed by the constitution itself. Sri Lanka also has strong intellectual property laws in line with the World Intellectual Property Organization regulations. We are signatory to the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency of the World Bank as well as to the SARC Multilateral Treaty. Sri Lanka has entered into investment protection agreements with 26 countries and double taxation relief agreements with 45 countries. Looking at the BOI itself, we were set up in 1978 and we have over 40 decades of experience of hand holding investors and facilitating their investments in the country. We provide a vibrant business environment and out of the 1500 portfolio of BOI companies, over 1200 are foreign companies that operate across multiple sectors such as manufacturing high tech value added products, apparel, IT services, tourism, food processing, logistics, education and large scale infrastructure to name a few. As this graph shows you over the last 10 to 15 year period, the higher percentage of investments have been in the large scale infrastructure sector. Looking at the talent pool available in Sri Lanka, we ranked number one in terms of South Asia's literacy rate. Sri Lanka has the second largest SIMA pool of accountants in the world next to the UK. Most of the workforce is proficient in the English language and English is widely understood and spoken which has been a huge bonus for foreign investors that set up in the country. We also have a highly versatile and skilled workforce renowned for its trainability. On an yearly basis, 30,000 graduate output is available through 15 state universities, 19 higher education institutes and other private universities. Over 100,000 tertiary and vocationally trained students also join the workforce in a given year. If you look at the details, in terms of the wage comparison in US dollars for general workers, engineers and managers, 
this slide will give you an idea of the rates that are charged in other regional countries in comparison to Sri Lanka. The locational advantages that Sri Lanka offers in terms of global connectivity is that we are a transshipment hub in South Asia, well connected to trade and business centers. Sri Lanka is strategically located at the crossroads of major east-west shipping routes and Sri Lanka is home to sea connectivity in terms of the Colombo and Hambantota ports. We are the first, the Colombo port is the first in South Asia and 22nd in the world, as well as it's the 17th best connected port and 24th best TEU throughput port in terms of the Lloyd's list of 100 top ports. The port of Colombo has three terminals with 11 berths that offer a 12 to 18 depth meter facility for ships berthing at the Colombo port. An additional three berths are now under construction under the West Terminal, and that will also offer an 18 meter depth for vessels that come into the port. The Hambantota port, which is located in the south of the country, has been declared as a free port, and that would facilitate entrepot trading and logistic facilities to be housed in that area. This particular port is famous for its roro operations, marine bunker fuel, and cruise terminal operations. The Hambantota port offers 10 berths with a depth of 17 meters, while an additional two berths have been dedicated for oil bunkering purposes. In terms of air connectivity, Sri Lanka has three international airports and it caters to 100 destinations in 47 countries worldwide. Annually, their aircraft movements are over 60,000 and the passenger movements over 10 million while cargo handling is over 250,000 metric tons. In terms of digital connectivity, Sri Lanka gives you availability of fast and more efficient technologies. We have a 5G enabled business ecosystem and Sri Lanka, I'm proud to say, has become the first South Asian country to trial 5G technology in March of this year. This would facilitate and enhance enterprises to have solutions that would enable the fourth industrial revolution. In terms of fiber connectivity, as you see on this map, we are very connected to the rest of the world. And the later CMEV6 system, is, which is now under construction, is expected to be ready for service by Q1 of 2025. Let us look at the quality of life. Sri Lanka, as you may have heard, is a great place to live and work. It offers you international healthcare facilities, leading international schools with quality education for families that, for expatriate families that want to locate in this country. And we are very proud to say that Sri Lanka offers eight World Heritage Sites, as well as offers many recreational activities be it surfing, golfing, or any other hiking, trekking, whatever you want to do, I mean, you can do it in Sri Lanka in a very short period of time. We have also been ranked highest in the Human Development Index in South Asia. The expatriates living in Sri Lanka have a wide selection of housing and luxury condominium apartments that they can choose to live in, as well as have a very cosmopolitan lifestyle with the world-class hotels and high-end shopping that is available in the country. Let us look at the market access Sri Lanka offers in terms of the trade agreements we have entered into with India, Pakistan, Singapore, and in terms of the EU GSP Plus scheme. Under the GSP Plus scheme, the investors would be benefited with a zero duty facility for over 6,400 items to 27 EU countries. 
and there is full removal of custom duty on 66 EU tariff lines. So that is a major advantage an investor would have by locating and exporting from Sri Lanka. In terms of the FTAs with both India and Pakistan, which gives duty-free access to over 1.5 billion consumers, over 4,000 tariff lines would enjoy the same benefit of zero duty access. And with the FTA with Singapore, it not only covers goods, but is extended on all items for services as well. The, the country has also uh, got into regional trade agreements with, under SAFTA and APTA, which again would give you market access to 1.7 billion and 2.5 billion consumers respectively. So I think that is a very good case for you to consider coming into Sri Lanka very seriously. The access to South Asian and European markets with over 2 billion consumers in the sectors that we have depicted here are some of the areas you could really look at in terms of setting up in Sri Lanka. Under both the Indian and the Pakistan uh, trade agreements, we have pharmaceuticals, electronics, rubber products, aircraft parts, and such manufacturing activities. In terms of the GSP plus scheme, it extends to further, further manufacturing areas like fish, vegetables, value-added tea, tobacco, footwear, and ceramics. The, in, the investment incentives that the BOI offers come under three categories. One is under section 17 of our law, where we require a minimum investment of 500,000 US dollars. Another area is where you can come in with 250,000 US dollars minimum investment and approval can be granted under section 16 of the BOI law. The Strategic Development Projects Act offers pharmaceutical industries and textile industries with, with a minimum investment of 5 million and 10 million ex, million uh, of investments to be facilitated for approvals. The concessions that we offer in terms of corporate income tax is 14% against the standard tax rate of 24%. Furthermore, customs duty exemptions for import of project related items, including raw materials during the lifetime of your project is also provided. Another feature that can be beneficial to the company setting up here is the enhanced capital allowance of 100 to 200%, which are granted for projects that invest over 3 million in depreciable assets. The same concessions are available up till 2024 for projects that invest even less than 3 million in depreciable assets. The other category that we give concessions are under the Strategic Development Projects Act, where a corporate income tax of five to 10 years can be considered and approved. In addition to that, Exemptions from VAT, port and airport levy, says can also be granted in discussion with the Ministry of Finance. So corporate income tax exemptions of five, seven and 10 years are also available for the areas that have been depicted in this slide. For example, seven years for boat and shipbuilding. And for startup companies, you get a five-year tax holiday. If it is an agriculture or agro-processing, you will get a 10-year tax holiday. What is very noteworthy here is that for the sectors of IT-related businesses, export-oriented services, bonded and offshore business warehouses, there is no income tax at all. They have been exempted from corporate income tax. So that, again, is something that you should consider very seriously when deciding to come in here, because that is a very attractive concession that you will be given. 
it's the board of investment is unique in that we not only appraise your investment proposal and give you approval but we also develop and maintain export processing zones so that we have readily available industrial land sites for you to set up in when you come into the country currently we operate 15 export processing zones where we house 280 companies that provide over 135,000 employment to our citizens. And they also contribute 3 billion of our annual export revenue. BOI is now setting up two new export processing zones, one in the east and the other in the south to meet the demands of investors that require industrial land sites. Let us look at the sectors that uh, we would be considering today in, for the manufacturing area in pharmaceuticals, textiles, automotives, electronics, and wood building. The BOI has very proactively found a location in the south of the country to have a dedicated zone for pharmaceutical manufacturing. What is unique in this is that we have pre-cleared environmental approvals for all the products that we have set out here, such as formulation of antibiotics, manufacture of antibiotics, and even the manufacture of cosmetic products and related ancillary facilities like R&D or lab testing. And there is a predetermined tax holiday of five to 10 years that can be offered to investors in addition to the customs and the duty VAT PAL says exemptions that can be offered to set up in this zone. So how we have positioned this zone is either you could come in and be a developer of the zone itself, provide the infrastructure and attract the investors to come in, or you could come, come in as a standalone manufacturing company and set up operations in this dedicated pharma zone. The second uh, dedicated zone that BOI has uh, embarked on is the one for a textile manufacturing operation, having understood the need to have the backward integration. As you may all be aware, Sri Lanka is reputed, it's globally reputed as a quality sourcing destination, and we cater to the world's best brands. So in terms of this zone as well, we have the pre cleared environmental approvals and the predetermined tax holidays that can be offered for the manufacturing, dyeing, printing, washing, textile and yarn production in this zone. So I believe this will be a very attractive uh, proposition to all you investors who are listening in to the, and participating in this webinar to look at and consider to come and set up in this location. Looking at the automotive components and rubber-based products, Sri Lanka is the largest exporter of industrial solid tires, and we are home to international brands like Michelin and Camso, Trelleborg, and we are also the fifth largest exporter of latex gloves to the world. So the country is known for its the best quality crepe rubber, which originates in Sri Lanka. So these, the, the current uh, operators with the BOI have understood the importance of the, the, the crepe rubber that's originated here and they have been able to leverage on that. So the potential products that we are suggesting are the aircraft safety nets, the safety seat belts, the gearboxes and in the, in the auto components part. And in terms of the rubber part, we look at the foam rubber products, solid tires, and the rubber gloves, which have really reached very great heights in terms of the high-tech gloves that are manufactured in Sri Lanka. And proud to say that even the R&D is done by our very own Sri Lankan technicians, where, where the, the gloves are more or less breathable gloves, where you do not sweat and you, you can even use your computer screen wearing this glove. So there are such high value added products 
that are being done with the skill and capabilities of our workforce. Looking at the boat building, as you all know, Sri Lanka is blessed with being an island. We are blessed with a 1,700 kilometer long coastline. We have over 12 fisheries harbor, and it is the ideal location for anyone wanting to, to do with the boat industry or the shipbuilding industry, because it is so easy to test your products in this location. We have a successful record of foreign companies that manufacture yachts, speed boats, rowing boats for sport, water sport activities, as well as companies like the Colombo Dockyard that do underwater cable laying vessels and high-end military vessels, as well as other commercial boat and shipbuilding. So what is really uh, important to note is that boat building in Sri Lanka will give you duty-free market access to India, Pakistan, and the EU. So the ball is in your court to decide when you're going to come in. Electronics and electrical components is another area you may not believe, but the, the high-end luxury cars like Chrysler, BMW, Volvo, all of them, and all the Japanese cars, the, the, the sensors, the, the wire harnesses, all of that is manufactured in Sri Lanka. So that, I think, alone is enough for you to understand the skill levels of our workforce and the trainability of our workforce, because obviously when, when these started, they did not know the technology or the know-how, but they have been able to learn and contribute to the growth of all these brands that have set up in Sri Lanka and who are continuing to grow and expand their operations. Let us look at the BOI facilitation that we offer to you in terms of the services we provide. One key area that we have uh, come up with is to, to host an investor matchmaking facility on our BOI web portal. What we want to do here is, as the, word, the term says, to do some matchmaking where investors can find each other, be it existing investors who are looking for more infusion of capital into their operations, or whether it is a local partner looking for a foreign joint venture partner. It could be any model. And it, this is going to be an independent portal where we would provide you the space and you can get into whatever kind of uh, uh, the synergies that you can create to, to do your business in Sri Lanka. So I encourage you to go into that facility and make use of it because uh, that might help you in terms of you wanting to speak to a, a business person rather than a government official in terms of what is the business environment in this country. Sri Lanka is very much into technology and we encourage technology and we have also moved in terms of that to give you a more digitized service from our end. So currently, even your application process can be sent through the web. Your visas can be all serviced through online applications. Your import customs declarations, your export customs declarations can all be facilitated through this digitized service. We would be in the future going more and more into digitization and trying to achieve a paperless environment in the organization come one year from now. The, the digitization process also provides you a facility where you can look at the job bank, where you can post vacancies as well as where a worker can look at vacancies available in companies. Similarly, we have a land bank online where you can look at not only BOI export processing its own lands, but private lands being offered for investment purposes. So we are very much into that area and hope to have the whole system digitized again by before the end of one year. In terms of other facilitation that the BOI does, we would handhold you and give you all the information you require from day one. If you need to research into any investment area, our 
Research and Policy Advocacy Department. Officials are there to help you in terms of policies or in terms of maybe case studies that they would be able to share with you. We also connect you with relevant stakeholders, not only the government officers, but also it could be industry clusters or associations that you need to be in touch with, and we gladly make that connection for you. In terms of any issues that you may come across when you are you're doing your operations in Sri Lanka, again, the BOI is with you to resolve whatever that needs to be done, whether it is with a local authority or with any other party. Another key area that uh, we provide facilities in the arranging of site visits, be it to a zone or any other location, to see whether it is suitable for the type of business you're proposing and to give you the required approvals for the site as well as the environmental part of it. The BOI also actively engages with you to obtain any clearances that you may require to start your operations in the country. We also, again, as uh, stated earlier, if you, are, if you want to do a manual or a, instead of a virtual meeting through the investor matchmaking facility, we can arrange physical meetings for you with potential joint venture partners. So I believe everyone has apprehensions when they are looking at a new country and wondering, okay, how smooth is it going to be to come in and invest? So I think this is not only to this part of the world or Sri Lanka alone, but worldwide, any investor would, would be having a question mark, okay, how smooth is it going to be? So having identified the need for an investor to be comfortable and be able to do all his transactions in one location, the BOI this year has set up a dedicated flow and we call it the Investor Facilitation Center where a dedicated space has been made available for, in, for investors to come in where they can make their inquiries where all relevant department officials would come to that particular space and advise them on what they have to do. It goes up to the point of where they have to fill the application. Even that would be handled by our officers to help them help the investor so that the investor does not have to go searching into different areas to find out, okay, how do I set up my company? How do I submit my application? This particular process is not only up to the point of uh, the application or the approval. It also translates into an interagency coordination committee, which would have representatives of senior officials of other agencies, be it the Urban Development Authority, the Environment Authority, the Electricity Board, or whatever, whatever agency that is required, tourism, whatever agency that's required to be part of that approval process. So this, we believe, will be a seamless experience for the investor because we aim to satisfy and make life easier for the investors. So next time you are in Sri Lanka, please remember to come to the Investor Facilitation Center, get an idea of what we are doing and how we can assist you in your journey with us in Sri Lanka. So BOI is home to renowned manufacturers and this just gives a, a, a brief snapshot of some of the, the companies that are located here and who are, who are servicing very high-end international brands worldwide. And uh, with, with this, I would also like to share with you the, the experiences some of the companies have, uh, have expressed in terms of their operations in Sri Lanka. I hope I have been able to answer most of the questions or queries you may have had, but uh, we will have a Q&A session after this. So let me leave you with some of the thoughts from our companies. And thank you again for being with us today.